Today, the energy sector is one of the biggest industries that drives the U.S. economy. The energy sector alone accounts for 4.8% of the U.S. gross domestic product. But back in the 90s and 2000s, there was one company that was leading the sector, but it immediately collapsed within a month. Today at Finance Spur, we learn about the story of the biggest scandal in the U.S. economy, Enron. But for more videos about finance, technology, and business, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Enron, a once mighty corporation, stood as the seventh largest in the United States, acclaimed for its groundbreaking innovations in energy trading and market dynamics. It appeared as a formidable force, seemingly outsmarting its competitors with intricate and complex business strategies that were difficult for the average person to imagine. However, beneath what appears to be a successful business lay a colossal scam filled with deception, fraud, and political manipulation. Enron's downfall would go on to be recognized as the most significant corporate scam in American history, leaving in its wake monumental losses, job layoffs, and legal convictions. This story unveils how a company could rise to a value of $60 billion in a decade only to crumble into bankruptcy in less than a month. Before we continue how it went downhill, let's first learn its history. Enron was first an energy supply company, primarily dealing with natural gas, but it gradually evolved into a multifaceted business, venturing into energy trading, power, broadband, and even weather-related trading. It became Wall Street's darling continuously boosting its stock price and enjoying significant political influence. Notably, Enron was the largest contributor to George W. Bush's presidential campaign, and Bush referred to Kenneth Lay, the company's founder, as Kenny Boy Lay, who was a former financial analyst, climbed the ranks and developed close ties with political figures. But Enron was a little bit sketchy, and trouble was coming. The Valhalla scandal of 1987 stands as a stark early indication of the ethical and operational instability that would come to define Enron's trajectory. At its core, this scandal revolved around the audacious actions of Enron's oil traders, who played a pivotal role in driving the company's profits at the time. Rather than adhering to responsible financial practices and ethical guidelines, these traders plunged headfirst into risky and unscrupulous endeavors that should have triggered alarm bells throughout the organization. But it didn't. One of the most obvious issues within the Valhalla scandal was the traders' preference for reckless gambling with the company's resources. They essentially engaged in high-stakes betting using Enron's funds, exposing the company to significant financial risks. Now. This behavior lacked the necessary oversight and risk management measures, highlighting a concerning deficiency in Enron's internal controls. Plus, the traders' actions represented a clear violation of honest financial management principles, as they were effectively gambling with the very financial stability of the corporation. Now aside from the scandals, which should have been obvious in the first place, there was another source of Enron's downfall. Enter Jeffrey Skilling, who became the company's CEO. Skilling's vision was to convert Enron from a gas supply company into a natural gas stock market. He introduced market-to-market -market accounting, enabling Enron to book profits on the day a deal was signed, even if no actual earnings had been realized. This accounting trick inflated the company's paper value significantly. Scaling promoted a Darwinian culture within the organization, where ruthless competition and relentless pursuit of money were the driving forces. Employees were graded on a scale from 1 to 5, with those receiving a 5 being fired. This competitive environment led to an obsession with profits at any cost. 
Another of Enron's questionable activities extended well beyond the energy sector into uncharted territories such as trading bandwidth, venturing into partnerships for streaming services with the likes of Blockbuster, and even dabbling in trading weather-related futures. These ventures, though novel in their approach, were shrouded in controversy and raised significant doubts within the financial and business communities. Yet, remarkably, Enron managed to secure a spot on Fortune's prestigious list of the most innovative companies, showcasing the extent to which the company's charismatic leadership and intricate financial dealings could blur the lines between innovation and questionable financial practices. But Enron's rise was destined to fall. The turning point came when reporter Bethany McLean from Fortune magazine began to question Enron's financial practices, leading to a series of events that eventually exposed the company's fraudulent activities. Executives engaged in schemes to hide debt, create fictitious companies, and inflate profits. The House of Cards finally collapsed, leading to Enron's bankruptcy. The fallout was devastating with Arthur Anderson, Enron's accounting firm, collapsing, thousands losing their jobs, and billions of dollars in losses. Ken Lay, Jeffrey Skilling, and other executives faced legal consequences, with Skilling receiving a 24-year prison sentence, which was later reduced to 12 years, and Lay dying of a heart attack before sentencing. But the story doesn't end there. The Enron saga takes an unexpected turn beyond its dramatic collapse. After serving a portion of his prison sentence, Jeffrey Skilling, the mastermind behind Enron's fraudulent activities, re-emerged from incarceration with ambitious aspirations to re-establish himself in the energy sector. To achieve this goal, he sought the backing and expertise of former Enron executives, including the notably successful former Enron executive Lao Pai, who had accumulated substantial wealth. Despite Skilling's severely tarnished reputation resulting from his central role in one of the largest corporate scandals in US history, he displayed remarkable resilience and determination to return to the business world. Leveraging a unique opportunity presented by the SEC's ban on his involvement in public companies, Skilling ventured into the realm of private enterprise. Driven by his unwavering belief in his own abilities and an apparent willingness to overcome the odds stacked against him. The Enron saga is a tale of corporate greed, deception, and the consequences of unchecked ambition. This is how a once mighty corporation, hailed as an innovator, crumbled under the weight of its fraudulent practices, leaving devastation in its wake. But if you are interested in more videos about finance, technology, and business, don't forget to check out our channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notify bell for upcoming videos. For now, this is Finance Burr. Have a great day.